Here's the film Yandy and the Cows, part two. So that's my purple, and I'll add burnt sienna into it so it really takes, it really creates a, a um, desaturated purple, turns it into a sort of a warmish grey that's got a little bit of uh, coolness to it, got a little bit of warmness to it. It's, um, yeah, I enjoy painting in these tones. So just add a little bit of blue. You can sort of see that it's just crept back into that blue range. Um, a little bit more alizarin. Yeah, it's just trying to fiddle with these purples and greys just to get them just right. Um, so here's my purple. Now I'll just add a little bit more alizarin. Ah, oh, sorry, no alizarin, burnt sienna. Just a touch more. Yeah. Okay, I'm happier with that than I was with the first one. So I'll just place that a real thin wash of it over into this other pan. There are other colours there and I'm not fussed that they're mix, mixing with that, that's okay. And we'll see what we're going to do now. So here we go. Start light. I start light with a thin wash and work my way up. I try not to start the other way. That's just fraught with danger. So we'll just uh, work our way over the top and here we go. Again, not too, not too much. Maybe a little bit of dark. Darker tone as well. So I'm just playing with some of these darker tones now. I'll keep the background a little bit lighter than normal just so that I don't destroy the fact that I'm really wanting to concentrate on the foreground. Sorry about some of these. And just continue to work up. Some of these tree stumps, tree branches. The So it's a sort of a balancing act between putting down really dark tones and really light. You sort of really want to play around um, with a, a more of a random array than really too too specific and definite. Don't be like, I, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain, but um, I'm trying really hard not to put down too much of one tone but varying the tone wherever I can just so that uh, in a soft pit where the, where the paint's still wet when you vary the tone you just get these gorgeous sort of mergings of light and dark happening and it's just a very a very playful sort of array of, um, of 
tree, tree, tree trunks and a little bit of light popping in here, a little bit of fine tracery in some parts, a little bit of soft uh, wash in others. So I'm just sort of working my way along. Like so. So it is a, it can be laborious, but I think it's really about trying to create that, that result at the end of the day that, um, you're happy with so uh, it's coming along okay i'm not i'm not complaining just working that purple just so that we've got a little bit of variety in those in the in the tone of the trees it's sort of coming along it's not as it's not as um, um, overbearing a, as I thought it might have been so that's okay I'm happy with that a little bit darker in places Sort of see the edge of this. I'm just using this brush almost as a bit of a dry brush exercise. Just scraping it across the surface just to deposit some paint without putting it everywhere. In some parts filling it in, in other parts leaving it fairly, fairly empty. Just darkening tree, tree trunks here and there. Working our way down, I think we've got a tree about there. This is sort of fairly significant. And oh, just wipe that. Wipe that. So fairly significant, although this is quite a wispy tree. It's a significant tree in the sense that it has a fairly distinct colour set, well, a colour tone to it. So I'm just trying to create something at the end of this avenue of trees. I mean, there are other tones that I'll drop in while it's still wet. There's that, there's still a bit more to go. There is another tree, it's quite a dark tree. About, about here. And this one just takes on a slightly different character. I need to use a lot of my darks on that bit of yellow ochre in there. Ooh. That much French Ultra, or oh, it's not French, it's my phalo. Too much. Oh, that one's gone haywire, hasn't it? 
See, that's your alizarin. That goes off off the edge. If you don't watch it, boom, she off she goes. So I'll make that again. Use my brush. Oh, it's a save. That's about three or four times that that colour's dropped there now. Oh, my brush. A little bit of a lizard not a lot, just a little bit. Make a decent amount of that. We're going to be working with a, a fair amount of that color, so let's just make this purple. There's my dark purple, bit of burnt sienna, just to knock the edge off that, and it's a nice gray. Um, a bit more blue. Yellow ochre just to warm that up. Okay, so I'll just quickly do it with this one. Um, and then I'll finish it with this. So I've just thrown a little bit of water in there and I'm just picking up some of the edges of this tree. Another tree. Bit of shade there. And again, just picking up some of these other little elements on the tracks through there. Dot, dot, dot. Using that tone again. Just going to work my way back. There are other trees, but I'm just going to just... Yeah, thereabouts. I'm not going to include every tree otherwise I'll be here all day so I'll just use a bit of license on those there are all sorts of trees in the depths but what I will do is I'll create a little bit of a purple to just work over as a shadow over some of those um, some of these areas in underneath the trees so I'll work with purple is just is a nice uh, a nice way of dealing with shadows maybe not so intense maybe not so dark but certainly There we go. Get that purple right. A bit of water. Same tone.
bring some of those purples down into the depths of these shadows. up Just integrating the shadows with this last large tree that I left to the end just wanting to accentuate some of the shadow work that was happening and the silhouetting of this tree right on the end here. Okay, a few more lines. that right so that sort of gets us to the present where we've sort of picked up the tone of the background trees and now we want to move forward to the cows so I'm going to use a smaller brush um, uh, I'll, I'll use the one that I have been using so that it just sort of stays stays with me so the color I'm going to start with will actually be a dark um, a dark grey so we'll effectively use a combination of say French Ultra and Phthalo Blue Th those two colors this well they're not really the same but I'll just use those blues as to what I've got alizarin crimson uh, to generate that purple so you can sort of see it's a fairly dark color it's a relatively sort of between milk and cream in terms of stickiness I suppose adding burnt sienna to neutralize that tone um, but I will be using a little bit more burnt sienna than normal because I'll, I will want to just keep um, a warmer tone, a, a warmth of tone in that in that grey. So whilst it's a relatively cool colour at the moment, I'll just add a bit more burnt sienna to it so that it takes on more of a warmer hue, a warmer tone. So that's better. 
Now this is going to go down fairly, fairly dark um, in most cases, um, but you'll see that um, I'll be dropping in uh, burnt sienna and warmer colours in onto the um, in onto the cows, and then uh, obviously I haven't kept white edges to the tops of the cows, but I might just drop that in with a little bit of um, you know a bit of a white mask later on. So let's just see what we've got cow shapes. So. Let's make that relatively thin as a tone. Then we can drop other tones into it. This is that one. And what I mean by dropping in the brown, for example, now I might just take a little bit, actually I'll use a bit of transparent red oxide. So there's a little bit of transparent red oxide. And just to give the tone to the cow, I'm just going to drop a bit of brown into it. That just gives us a nice sort of warm, warm feel, warm tone to it. Well, that stuffed it. So we'll just work our way around. Slightly warmer tone over the back. So I've got all of these little cows I'm trying to I need to now paint. sitting there it's another one you know it's really just a process of picking shapes really of, of forms sitting in the grass so obviously you don't want the bottom edge um, hard, you don't want a hard bottom edge, but you've got to sort of paint a lot of these shapes on the fly. Put them here, a bit of water, get the browns moving. transparent red oxide just to sort of again break break up those colors have a nice warm cow in the foreground warm I mean as in warm in color not I'm sure she's a very nice cow but you know um, just lighter in tone
just drop in some of the darker tones that I had before. While it's wet you can do that, but once it starts to dry you're probably in a bit of difficulty at that point in time. Let's quickly some dark tones while it's still wet so they're okay so it's a little process as you can see it's just um, trying to get these darker silhouetted cows painted light and dark I mean they're all sorts really so I'm just making my way through this in a relatively simplistic fashion. I'm not worrying too much about the details, just as long as they're about right. A little bit of an ear, there's an ear, slight ear. There are other cows further over here. Again, you can sort of get a feel for the fact that they're all sitting down, most of them, having a bit of a rest, as you can see. In amongst those grasses, so... There are other ones sort of wandering around. So it's a sort of a, a lazy, lazy afternoon, or actually this is a really, this is an early morning shot, so it's a very lazy early morning, get a few more cows over here, they're just having a, a sit down. Quickly painted that one, what have we got, we've got someone having a rest over here. But that's too dark. So back to the burnt sienna. We'll just add add a touch of burnt sienna over a few ears. There now there are dark, there are cows further out 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 at the back. Um, now those I'll paint much lighter. They're further back so they're slightly desaturated. They're still around. Um, they're in the in the tusky grass back here but I'm not painting them. I'm not going to paint them as dark as what I have the ones in the foreground. I might just, just paint them fairly, fairly, fairly light. There are some Here and there. That's right, there's one there. Then there are these ones, these last two over here. So I'll paint those. Here we go. Actually, this one's a bull. So there we go. 
He's just chilling out here. Having a rest. Telltale signs, here we go. Obviously he's got some horns. He's got an ear there. I'll work with that ear in a tick. That horns. Real simple like that. Uh, I'll address that a little bit later and with some other details. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's sort of coming, coming, coming to sort of a conclusion with some of these. I'm still going to get a little bit darker on some of these cows, so we're not finished as yet. Um, but I'm just looking at getting a, a lot of a, a much richer mix in terms of what I can paint these cows with. So I'm just going to make another dark, so uh, French Ultra, a little bit of the alizarin, get that purple happening again, nice dark purple, burnt sienna into it to convert that into a nice dark grey. Add a bit more burnt sienna so that the tone just ends up a little bit warmer. And I can go back in and really just add some of these darker tones. this last cow As you can see fairly dark just adding some of these last dark elements more the paint it's still uh, fairly wet so I've got some opportunity to just throw in some darker tones um, and I can go back and just accentuate some of these other cows with a little bit of dry brush over there This is just going over with a sort of a dark wash now, just picking up some of the secondary shadow tones over, over the rump, these sort of elements there, the side there, the ears, the head. So like that. How are we 
again for time, 8.30. So we've still got a little bit, half an hour. You know, getting those first washes down doesn't take so long. Uh, but then really when it comes to uh, finishing, this is where, you know, the rubber hits the road, I suppose, and you're trying to just, you know, get the right, the right amount of light um, being picked up in the scene so it, it, you know as soon as you start putting your darks down that's where you start revealing the light so this that's what this that's what this last phase is really about it's really about delivering on some of those real real f last final details just to get that contrast right so that's really what I'm trying to trying to deliver now those last high high contrasts I've made my dark grey. Um, got those cows over there. There's a tail. Pops out there. Our cow. There. A couple of cows sitting down here. So you can sort of see I'm just working up the tones of these cows continually just getting them to the right level of darkness. Without them becoming black, I don't want them to come black. So there's that. So really one of the last last things is really just um, picking up on some of these some of the little elements that maybe I want to just pick up a little bit. Not a lot, because again I don't want them to be overemphasized. Um, there's another little bit of work I can do with these greys and the rigger. Is now just going over, just going over with a, a sort of a gravelly, dry, dry, dry brush rigger. It's sort of really just a, a muddy, muddy rigger that I sort of then go over and, and pick up some of the, the gravel and the grit. And obviously you've got shadows to contend with and deal with them. So I, I tend to, I can put those down in just a, in a grey, one of the greys that I've picked up before. But you don't want to be just dropping in, you know, dark patches of shadow, because that's sort of not how those shadows work. All these tussocky grasses. So I'm picking up those tussocky grasses in. little brush strokes like that just sort of discontinuous or just slightly different tone to the tones that are already there that's that's all you have to do you don't have to go crazy um, inventing new colors every time you need to you know pick a shadow or um, you know do a slight variation to the theme of the of those tussocks and things. So you can sort of see there's a there's a sea of um, sea of cows 
and now I'm just dropping in some of these various patches of tussock that are getting collecting little bits of sun here and there. Uh, there are, I mean, there are some shadows that, that that's that's to not a complete, necessarily complete statement in the sense that you don't want to put any shadows down, but very, very few. Um, I'll do that with a cobalt and alizarin mix. Cobalt and alizarin mix, but very thin and washed out. Very thin and washed out. And there might be the odd, that there are some suggestions of a shadow on some cows, but just, just ever so, ever so slight. Um, this cow in the foreground. So there's there's a sort of a unifying theme between the shadow of the cow and some of these tusky grasses, and I'll just keep washing that colour out out into further out. Same with here. one it's okay uh, there is one cow that I forgot so I'll paint, paint her there we are forgot her she's in the middle there slightly lighter in tone and color add a little bit of darker tone to it. In fact, I might use some of that purple that I've just made just to add that tone as the shadow tone. Let that drop into there. So there's a slight change in tone to that one. Um, okay, just <clears throat> if anything, there is some, um, I can, I'll just see if I have my colour. I do have some, I do have some white. I don't use white a lot, but I might just add one or two flicks of, of white here just in case. No, not so much just in case, but just a touch, just a touch of. I have a rigger, but I might just use this brush instead. I have a thin brush, very similar to a rigger, sort of like that. It's a little bit like a rigger. I'll um, just add a little bit of white to that brush. And yeah, I suppose I just have to really see if and where I need to put that, but I might just sort of Just to give myself a little bit of 
differentiation around some of these around some of these shapes so subtle it's that one there there is a little bit see ever so subtle that horn uh, around this ear Touch, touch there. There's something like a horn there, and ear. No, not too much, and maybe just around here. Okay, so uh, there you go. That's pretty much. That's pretty much my landscape. My landscape with cows. So um, I'll just take the paper off, uh, the tape off around the edge. Give you a, give you a look. See without the without borders in the edges. So you get a idea of what that looks like. Okay, so I'll just square this up to the, uh, the screen. It sort of looks like that. So um, I hope that's okay. I I really um, I really enjoyed the painting. I, I had fun with that one. Um, I hope.